Hi folks and welcome back to the shack and what we're going to be looking at today is how to rewind or repair one of these vintage television line output transformers and I did mention in the previous video when we looked at the old Philips that the line output transformer or LOPTI or flyback transformer if you were in the United States uh, was faulty and um, it was almost a bit of a game uh, game over situation but I managed to rewind it so what I'm going to do is show you in this video is how I did it um, I hope it's useful if you've got a vintage telly and you want to get it going and the Lopti is uh, out of order so basically just to re just to go over a few things the line output transformer is basically supplies the high voltage uh, and also voltages for the boost HT which are required for various things in the television and also it provides voltage for the deflection coils um, and in this it's not really a, a uh, sort of a true transform in the, tr in the sense of the word that you've got a separate primary and secondary coils they're actually um, it's actually a kind of like an auto transformer uh, because the primary inverted commas and the secondary are actually uh, joined together and the as you can see on this uh, transformer we've got the uh, the primary there with a uh, winding around this outside of it which is the heater supply for the HT rectifier uh, the PY86 I think it was in this case and you've also got the other winding there which is what we call the EHT overwind which is in this case about a thousand turns and what we're going to be doing is rewinding the primary on this I call it the primary but because it is sort of like one but it's not really in the, as, I, as I mentioned but we're going to be rewinding that one and uh, I'm going to show you some tips on how to do it so I think let's get on with that and get things set up and we'll see you in a minute. So one of the first things I did before taking apart the Lopti was basically t to take as many pictures of it as possible uh, from all directions so that I could get a good idea of where each wire went and uh, you know what did what. So this was these pictures were all taken just with my uh, iPhone and uh, I was trying to get some good close-ups and from different angles because this is very helpful when you want to when you want to put put it all back together again you know which wire goes where and it it's very useful to sort of reference um, you know for when you uh, put it back together so I've taken loads of pictures excuse the dirty fingernail there um, this is the underside of the EHT uh, rectifier base the uh, PY86 uh, I think it is and you can see again where the connections join onto the various pins just saves time I mean you could always look it up if you if you couldn't uh, have that information uh, and again more pictures from different angles showing exactly where all the wires go and taking note of the the color the, the different colors because that's going to be important when we uh, rewind the, uh, the, the the transformer and so when you've when you've done that you can then you're in the position to start taking the whole thing apart now this is the primary winding that we've got here which I've taken already taken off some of the turns and you can see the uh, the way it's constructed it's way it's got wax paper uh, between sort of the main windings and in between that it's sort of like quite a flimsy almost like tissue paper insulation uh, so I can see why these the primaries on these Loptis failed and you can see here this is a tapping and it's, it's simply just the, the loop of wire that's twisted on itself and then bought out um, and then it's sort of insulated with what I think is glass fiber tape uh, but, you know just to sort of pad it out a little bit um, and the very, another very important thing to do is uh, when you have a look inside the or when you take the thing apart is to make, is to make a careful note of the direction of turns because you'll need that information when you rewind it 
Uh, what and I tr what I made this mistake a couple of times. I had to restart again because I I basically started winding it in the wrong direction. Uh, so it's very important to take a reference. Say from if you if you imagine this is the top of the coil where all the main well all the mo most of the wires are coming out, um, and then you can figure out which what's the direction of turns clockwise or anti-clockwise. It's very important because the thing won't work if the direction of turns is wrong. Uh, and I made that mistake, learned the hard way. And you can see here on this one, there's some scoring around, some, some a bit of blackening around that uh, um, end of the coil. And here again, you can see here with I've put an arrow, you can see some some uh, sooting. And here's another layer as well. So here you can definitely see that the there's there's been some burning and that the enamel has has burnt off and and caused probably a, a shorted turn which will again make the transformer not work and once you get down to the final layer you can you, you can see um, this is a separate winding which is to, for the uh, flyback suppression lines uh, again you can see how the thing is uh, constructed so once and this is again a picture of the undersurface again it's important to take some notes on where the various screws go and how it's how it's put back together again again all useful information so once you once you've taken the pictures and you and you pulled the thing apart carefully and counted the number of turns of each layer that's what I, I documented it in my little notebook um, you're then going to be in a position to uh, put it all back together again and rewind the uh, the transformer and I'll show you uh, more or less how I did it and it seems to work it's quite a simple way of doing it one of the things that I did before I um, <clears throat> well as I was um, pulling the uh, coil apart was to make a careful note of all the different windings as I was uncoiling the coil and uh, you can see I've written everything down here We've got um, all the number of turns, the colours of the wires, as we've literally stripped them off. So I've literally done them layer by layer, and then every time I came to a wire, I made a note of it. And what I've also done as well, I've taken samples of the wire, uh, so I know the thickness of what to use, so that uh, I can get uh, a reasonable uh, replacement. I also made notes of the tappings as well, how the tappings were done, you know, they were looped up on top of each other. I think this is quite important because I don't think you will, well, I think most people won't remember all this. And, and you can see there I've done a, just get into focus a little bit, a little uh, circuit diagram or schematic of the actual transformer primary. So this would represent the boost uh, HT winding, it's about 558 plus another 243 turns and this is the deflection coil windings. So it sort of gives you an idea of what we're dealing with. The actual HT overwind, just give you an idea, that was a thousand turns and funnily enough that actually wasn't uh, as daunting as it, uh, as it looks because there's a fair few turns on the primary. So in terms of the materials that you need uh, for winding up a Lopti, you know, obviously you're going to need uh, wire. Uh, you probably need quite a bit of it, and you know, as long as you get the roughly the right sort of thickness as as per the windings you're trying to wind. I chose um, polyester coated, which you need to scrape off uh, with a knife. Um, if you look at enameled wire. There's a very good uh, website called wires.co.uk which um, sells all sorts of different types of enameled wire and uh, they do sell such things as polyurethane coated wire which I think you can solder off but I didn't go for that. This is this is polyester coated wire which I think is probably a bit more resilient. Um, then you can also see I've got a tin of anti-corona lacquer, a, a small uh, bottle of super glue which uh, I will show you the reason for that. And then I've also got insulating varnish, uh, which, um, to be honest with you, I didn't really use that much. I only really used that for the HT overwind at the very end. Uh, most of the time I was 
uh, varnishing with the anti-corona lacquer which is quite easy to do and it it dries very quickly the other important um, uh, thing is a number of tape different types of tapes here so probably the most important one I found was the Capton tape uh, which is actually quite cheap you can buy this off eBay or Amazon and it's polyamide uh, tape or yeah I think polyamide polyamide anyway it's very good insulation tape and it's sort of uh, um, quite heat resistant as well and I, I sort of use this to uh, insulate the layers as I was winding up uh, I found it quite useful. Uh, the other tape that I tried, which um, also should be quite good, but I think my reel is a bit too wide. I think it comes in slightly uh, thinner diameters, or, or, or yeah, or, or yeah, widths, I should say. Uh, and that's it's called Nomax, and it's uh, Nomax um, paper transformer, uh, sort of insulation paper type stuff. Um, I didn't use this, it is adhesive and I think it's not it's not too bad but if you can get the right thickness or the right width I think it uh, is actually probably okay. Uh, <clears throat> but I did use some of this in, to just to, in, to sort of a bit of added insulation between the two uh, between adjacent windings um, but I think the Captain tape is probably adequate. The other tape that I used is um, this stuff here which is glass tape this is quite expensive stuff it's it's actually raised sort of high voltages RF and stuff and that's quite useful for sort of um, pinning down the the tappings and also um, if, if you want to sort of uh, to bed a winding down a bit then you can use uh, several pieces of this um, this type of tape and then finally for the just for to finish the the winding off or, or the the trans the the transformer winding at the very end I used this um, scotch tape which uh, again is uh, insulation tape but it's sort of like a little bit better quality than um, bog standard insulation tape it's scotch uh, um, I can't remember what sort it is but it uh, let's get it into focus there it's uh, it's quite good. Uh, so those are the bits and pieces that you'll need and we'll quickly show you how how to wind it We're not going to wind a complete transformer because that'll take forever But I'll show you sort of like the uh, the sequence of events uh, to just to wind uh, um, To start winding it One of the things that's uh, quite useful um, before you start winding the uh, the coil is to mount it on uh, some form of mandrel it just makes it easier to handle and this one here is actually from my coil winder which uh, I haven't really used for this um, <clears throat> transformer because it's just a little bit too cumbersome because what happens is that when you start winding the former it tends to become quite uneven so what I do is I slip that on there and then it just helps to support the whole the whole structure when you're and you're about to wind it, so just screw this up. And it's then it's held. Try and get it as even as possible. Then you can sort of move it around, and as you're winding, for instance, you can sort of move it like that with your uh, roll it with uh, one hand, and then feed the wire in as you're winding just makes life a bit easier so I've just started winding this this coil and what I'm trying to do is keep all the the turns right up close to each other then shoving them together with my nail you've got to maintain the tension now at this point Usually I stop about here and I just apply a little bit of super glue to there to stop the windings from falling off. You just need a couple of blobs. Uh, at the moment this, they don't seem to be causing too much of a problem. I'm just going to put this form on the floor there. I think it will be a bit easier. And then we just keep winding. You've just got to maintain the tension all the time. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll 
if you give me a moment I will come back and I will complete this winding and then show you what it looks like. So as you can see I've done about well, 20, 25 windings and I'm not going to do the whole former. I think uh, it's going to take me a bit too much time and uh, it's only really for demonstrations but I, normally when you're doing one of these you would fill obviously the whole former. So what I do there, if you imagine that we've completed this layer, um, I basically just spray some of the old uh, anti-corona lacquer onto it. This stuff dries pretty well. Just give that a few seconds to uh, try and get back into picture. There we go. Let's give that a few seconds and uh, all we do then is then cover it with some capped on tape. So I'm just trying to find the end of. Try to do it with one hand. Now what I what I try to do with this is try and do it from this side so that then the winding the free end then goes over I usually do about two turns and obviously you, this particular type of capped on tape isn't the widest either so you obviously need to sort of spiral it around you can be quite liberal with this. I usually put out two layers of that on and that's normally about it really so you just carry on repeating the process and once you get to the end of the former you simply double back on yourself and repeat the process it is quite important to uh, it's quite important to, 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 to as I said to just keep an eye on the direction of turns and as the former as the former grows what you'll find is that it can be a little bit more difficult to um, uh, to keep the turns from slipping off and that's where the super glue comes in handy the super glue is very important to kind of keep the the ends of the uh, the wire from locking up so that's pretty well more or less it and once you finish you just simply bind it up with a few layers of the uh, scotch tape and uh, as you proceed the the other thing is as well obviously I, I just use for insulating the tappings and the ends of the of the windings I just use simple uh, heat shrink it seemed to work okay didn't have any problems once you're done you should end up with something that looks like this once it's all been put back together and it should work providing you've wound it correctly uh, that was my experience if it's wound correctly it will work if you need to do the HT overwind which in this case this particular one was actually fine uh, it's done exactly the same way um, usually you're dealing with about a thousand turns so uh, on this transformer it was about 50 turns per layer and there were about 20 21 layers in total and what I did do is I just was a bit more liberal with the capped on tape towards the end uh, you know winding it up and then binding it all up with the uh, scotch tape the other thing as well is what I, uh, I did was using the insulating varnish at the top and the bottom of the uh, of the coil that's pretty much it and it seemed to work. So that's more or less how I repaired this Lopti. Um, so if you want to give it a go, uh, it's worthwhile doing and it's uh, good to keep the old tellies alive and kicking. Anyway, thanks for watching and hope to catch you again soon.